Oh man. Oh no. Dude, bro, what happened? I don't know, man. It just right? fell. Here, I'm okay. Try this, dude. Grip a glass. Grip a glass? Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> Glass is a culmination of several ideas, all stemming from how people handle beverages. Typically, people like to enjoy their beverages either hot like coffee or cold like beer. This can make holding a glass very uncomfortable or even impossible. This is where our product, Grip of Glass, comes into place. No longer do you have to burn your hand from having a fresh cup of coffee in the morning, and no longer do you have to drop your beer after having like, one too many drinks one night. Very interesting stuff. So, let's talk about how this works. Grip of Glass provides support to the drink comfort for the user, attaches to a wide variety of cups and bottles. It also has a low thermal conductivity so the grip doesn't change temperature no matter what you're drinking. Very sorry we had to change our, our location. Unfortunately, the executive producer uh, he didn't like that other room, but why don't you go ahead and tell me what kind of person is typically using this grip of glass. When it comes down to it, grip of glass can be used by anyone, but there's a target market, young adults ages 21 and up. People, when they go to the bar, have a tendency to drop and spill their drinks because they're slippery or they're just too intoxicated. Our product is perfect for this demographic. Bars could sell the drinks with the grip of glass attached to it, putting a stop to the never-ending process of drinking and dropping. A little bit more on the market. Although grip of glass is targeted at drinkers, typically college students, anyone can use it. So the potential market could be anyone who uses cups. This is useful for toddlers just learning to drink, clumsy teenagers, or senior citizens whose grip may not be as strong as it used to be. So are there any human factors issues with the grip of glass? There are. Let me bring in my human factors engineer to discuss more about that with you. Same question. Very good question. We know you're all wondering, you know, what could possibly go wrong with such a good product. Well, there are a couple potential issues. But don't go drinking while your stars just yet, boss. We have solutions. Number one concern on everyone's mind, will your beer get warm? Not to worry, the neoprene is a very good insulator. But wait, how is the grip going to stay onto the glass? Well, this is where it got tricky, but not to worry. Remember those snap-on wristbands when you were a kid? We've implemented this technology to ensure that the, glass, that the grip wraps around the glass. Now, if you're a righty or a lefty, doesn't matter. We have finger slots on both sides so that it accommodates both. Finally, for our younger users, what if their grip's not strong enough? Well, that's okay. The gel forms directly onto their hand. It wraps around and adds extra support, so they'll be okay. Now, this is a very interesting design. What is this made out of? Uh, let me call my manufacturing engineer, Rob. There he is right now. Same question to you, Rob. Well, the, the outside is made out of a neoprene rubber, which is uh, very familiar because it's made out of the same thing as koozies. This uh, our, its outer handle is made out of a polyisoprene, which it has a much higher friction and allows for a much uh, more stable grip. And these finger holds are, are contain a cyber gel, which, uh, which conforms to the finger and even helps more with the uh, gripability. <laughs> Before going into the design aspects that affected our manufacturing costs, we'd like to first talk about our overall ma material, production, and tooling costs for our product. To obtain these numbers, we used the CES EduPack software and custompartnet.com. Our product is going to be manufactured in two parts. First, the neoprene will be produced using a neoprene injection molding. The estimated cost of this is fairly low due to the low number of features on this particular piece. We estimate that to produce 100,000 pieces, the cost breakdown would go as follows. $125,575 for the materials, 
$29,506 for the production costs, and $37,504 for tooling costs. This comes to a total of $192,585 for 100,000 neoprene pieces. The next piece that will be produced is the polyisoprene rubber attachment with cybergel inserts. This part will also be injection molded. With approximately 25 features to be machined, the cost breakdown is as follows. $32,214 in material costs, $27,980 in production costs, and $38,512 in tooling costs. Also adding to the costs are the addition of the same technology as in slap bracelets, as mentioned earlier. The basic variety, which are made up of little more than a plastic sheath and a custom-made plastic spring, are commonly sold wholesale at around $1.30 per part. This increases our costs by approximately the same amount, since very little tooling will be required to integrate it into our product. Therefore, the total manufacturing cost to produce our product is $316,291 per 100,000 units, which is about $3.16 per unit. Based on our market research, we've determined the overall product height to be 5 inches and the uh, height of the grip to be 3 inches. The width will be 0.4 inches. The finger slots, the length of those will be 1.58 inches. The total outer radius will be 1.98 inches. And the inner radius, which will fit around the cup, will be 1.5 inches. Another design feature that impacted our manufacturing cost was the size of our polyisoprene portion of the grip. We wanted to minimize its size because neoprene is cheaper per pound. However, Polyisoprene rubber has a better grip than neoprene. To lower costs, we did research and used anthropometric data to come up with an average hand size. We took that measurement and applied it to the polyisoprene grip because we wanted to ensure the entire hand would be in contact with either the polyisoprene or the cybergel in the inserts. One design aspect that impacted our manufacturing cost was that we decided to make our grip ambidextrous, meaning we inserted enough finger grip slots for left and right handed people. This increases the number of slots and therefore increases the manufacturing cost, but also allows for a wider market. One significant trade-off that we made in designing this product was based on how the grip functioned with temperature-specific beverages. Originally, we would include a set of freezing materials that would freeze when the drink was kept in a cold place or like the freezer. There were several iterations of this idea, from liquid freezing packs to flexible freezing crystals, but it was apparent that using this would not only add to the cost of manufacturing, as the freezing packs would have to be custom made, but it would also add to the bulk and restrain the flexibility of the product, not to mention exposing the user to the cold of the freezer anyhow. Instead, we decided to shift to a more standard approach and utilize the materials that better insulated the drink, such as the neoprene and the polyisoprene, as used in our product. Not only does this still keep the drinks cold, but it also maintains the warm drinks as well. Additionally, there is less bulk to the product, making for an easier and more controlled grip.